This is News at 8. Hello and welcome to the Primetime Bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV and also on ABN across Europe. Ahead in the Bulletin, good news for residents of Adenta and surrounding areas as President Mahama commissions the phone waterworks. An Accra Circuit Court grants bail to six persons arrested in connection with the Nile Ametepe cocaine case. Public sector registered pension schemes ask President Mahama not to sign amendments to the Pension Act passed by Parliament last week. And the African Centre for Energy Policy, ASEP, wants the National Petroleum Authority to reduce fuel prices in its next review following the drop in crude oil prices. In news elsewhere, Tanzania's president sacks lands and housing minister over corruption. We have all these plus sports and showbiz coming up shortly. Please stay with us. Now let's take a look at the details now. Pressure group Occupy Ghana has given government a five-day ultimatum to reduce the price of petroleum products. The demand follows the decline in global price of crude oil. The group has warned it will react if government fails to do so within the stipulated period. The group argues the already overburdened citizens should not be made to pay for the gross inefficiency of government. Though world prices of petroleum products have fallen, the National Petroleum Authority insists the local prices cannot be reduced due to a 1.5 billion cities debt to bulk oil distribution companies. Occupy Ghana finds this excuse unacceptable and intends to protest. For example, if we decide that we're going to occupy MPA, we need to go through the process. We need to serve notice with, with MPA. We need to serve, no notice to MPA. We need, to serve, we need to engage with the police service to make sure that we've done what is required to do whatever it is. If we need to go to court, then we need to make sure that we go through um, that process, serve the required notice um, um, for that kind of action to take place. So there are a number of actions that we are looking at. But uh, we hope that within the five working days, looking at the calls that TUC and other concerned Ghanaians are putting up, um, some, some kind of action or some kind of reaction would come from, from government and the MPA. The group has also indicated they will ensure their concerns over cases of financial malfeasance are addressed by the Auditor General. The AG has written to us and said, he stated that the response is confidential. We have stated his response. Um, we, are, we are working on our response. And so we are pointing out that we are not entirely satisfied with the responses. And we believe that there is reason for, um, for the issues that we put out there in our first letter to still be looked at and then for that outcome to be achieved. And so, yes, we are still focused on the initial outcome that we expected. In 2015, Occupy Ghana plans to take their demonstrations to Parliament while continuing to push for electoral and educational reforms. They will also seek probity and accountability in the GET Fund, Road Fund, Ghost Names in Payroll, as well as recovery of judgment debt using legal means. Now, the Forum for Public Sector Registered Pension Schemes is asking President Mahama not to sign an amendment to the Pensions Act passed by Parliament last week. The amendment seeks to reduce accrued benefit to pensioners in the country from 50% to 37.5%. A situation the workers say will worsen the plight of pensioners who already face a number of challenges. The workers are disappointed they were not involved in consultations leading to the drafting of the amendments to the Act. According to them, the decision casts doubt on government's motive to implement the pensions reform. It has come to us as no surprise the rush by government to amend sections of the National Pensions Act 208 at 766. The amendment at this point in time casts doubt on the motive of government in the implement implementation of the pension reform. 
the forum wishes to state further that pensions affect the future of workers. It is therefore wrong on the part of government to have proceeded with amendments to the pension at 76 without recourse to workers. The forum further describes the move by government as a deliberate attempt to divert attention from calls by public sector workers for government not to interfere in the management of their tier two funds. We see this amendment as part of a grand design by government to divert attention from the call by public sector unions and associations for government to desist from interfering in the operations of the second tier operational pension schemes. They are therefore calling on President Mahama to revert the amendment bill to parliament since it is not in the interest of the ordinary Ghanaian worker. It was because of the benefits stated in the National Pensions Act 208 at 76s that workers wholeheartedly accepted the pension reform. To come back after five years to reduce the basis for calculation of pensions is a stab at the back. It is unfortunate that the forum's attempt at getting a hearing at a joint committee of, of um, finance and employment, social welfare and state enterprises of parliament was not fruitful. We would wish to plead with His Excellency, the President, not to append his signature to the amendment bill and refer it back to parliament for further stakeholder consultation. According to Section 77 of the Pensions Act 766 of 2008, the minimum pension payment for workers is 50% of the average annual salary. But per the amended bill currently awaiting presidential approval, the minimum pension payment has been reduced from 50% of the average annual salary for the three best years of a member's working life to 37.5%. Now, in access to good drinking water is a basic right that should not be denied anyone. But this is not the situation for residents of Adakru Trapenu in the Vata region. Residents trek long distances to access the only source of water in the community. It is 7 a.m. and Mary Atam is going to fetch water. Mary and her family have relied on this water for years. The water is used for cooking, bathing, and drinking. This farming community cannot boast of a single borehole, let alone pipe-borne water. Not only do residents have to contend with not getting bitten by snakes that hide in the bushes that lead up to the water side, they also compete with livestock for the water. Uh, she, Kakala inyuno enu mitamiku inyupete kono echinu up to now. Kuchile echi mde kama le nyabo nyeshi nyui ke mila zang. Ya mama wanyi vivasa sene mi echi nyaku ni problem ne mi le jukome. Echi enu mila menyu ni miu. Ebaru wenye kaka yila zame inyu wa buli. Kakala de kama le ava nu re eya kwa nu. Adequate and safe water is important for human health and well-being, as well as economic production and sustainable development. Failure to ensure the safety of drinking water may expose communities to the risk of outbreaks of waterborne diseases, of which Adaklutarapenu is no exception. Oh, I'm 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 Although accessing good drinking water should be a basic human right, many people do not have access to safe and adequate drinking water. Many people struggle daily in their search for water to drink let alone one which is safer and adequate. The community also lacks a decent place of convenience. Therefore, both the young and old practice open defecation. Residents also allege they have not received any assistance from agri-extension officers 
when it comes to the spraying of their farms. According to them, any attempt to secure bank loans has proven very difficult. And away from the water region, we're back in the capital. And the Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, in the Upper West has destroyed unwholesome products worth 70,000 Ghana cities. The items including cosmetics, food products, drugs, aphrodisiacs, and low-quality condoms were seized during the authority's routine post-market surveillance exercise. The move is to ensure the public purchases wholesome items for the Yuletide. Rafiq Salam reports from WA. The Food and Drugs Authority is mandated by Public Health Act, Act 851, to ensure that food and drugs consumed by the public is safe and wholesome. Officials of the Upper West Food and Drugs Authority, guided by this act, embarked on their routine post-market surveillance where they visited shops, stores and warehouses in the region to ensure that the products that are sold to the public are registered, conform and not expired products. Several products worth thousands of Ghana CDs were seen to be expired, unregistered and non-conform products. They were then picked from the stores and brought to the Upper West's office of the FDA before being sent to the Siriuri refuse dumping site for burning. The items seized include cosmetics, food products, drugs, herbal products and aphrodisiacs as well as condoms that were procured by the Ghana AIDS Commission and later found out not to be of good quality. Akurugu Gordon is the Upper West Regional Officer of the Food and Drugs Authority. Sincere apologies for that technical hitch with the sound there, but we will bring you that story much later. Uh, you're still watching the Prime Time Bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV. We'll take a breather here. When we return, we have. You're welcome back and many thanks for staying. Now, residents living in areas that are supposed to be supplied water from the Kwon Water Station can now heave a sigh of relief. President John Mahama has commissioned the Kwon Water Supply Expansion Project, which is to pump out 20 million gallons of water daily to homes in Accra and Eastern Region. Speaking at the commissioning ceremony held at the premises of the project, President John Mahama noted that general water supply by 2016 would be increased from a little over 60% to 70%. 26%. Here's a report that I found. We have good news for bring you that story much later. Well, the six persons standing trial in the Nailia Metafeko Kane saga have been granted bail by an Accra High Court, Accra Circuit Court, I beg your pardon. The presiding judge, Justice Francis Aubrey, pegged the bail amount for all six accused persons at 100,000 Ghana cities with three shorties. Joe News' Latif Idris was in court today and has come through with this report. The accused persons are Al Haji Mohammed Alamid Dawood, Nana Ikria Amponsa, and Sadelia Sandra Nuhu, and three other officials of the Kotoka International Airport. Al Haji Dawood, first accused, is alleged to have assisted in Na Yele Ametefe's easy passage through the Kotoka International Airport VIP launch. But his lawyer, Frank Davis, argues strongly in court that the state attorney has failed to prove beyond reasonable doubt his client is indeed guilty. He was therefore excited when the court granted the bail application he had put through early in the day. 
we, we can only be grateful to the court. Okay. As I said yesterday, we expected the court to err on the side of justice, fairness, and equity. It's quite obvious that from day one, the court was minded to grant the accused person's bill, but it was premised on the fact that the prosecution needed much time to terminate their investigations. I've, I've, As the court just said, uh, between the time they were arrested and arraigned before the court and now, is a much long time enough for the prosecution to have completed the investigations. And since they themselves said today that they are still persisting in their investigation, this was just right and proper for the court to have granted the accused person's bill as we have all seen in court this morning. Council, you, you press hard for, for the review on the civil servants amount that is supposed to have in his account and also the, you wanted the civil servants part to be expunged from the ruling and the, the, the judge continued to you know make his stay. What, what do you have to say? About uh, I think that uh, this new trend of, 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 of bail conditions is quite novel to our criminal jurisprudence. Uh, normally since offenses are criminal in nature and public servants are clothed with a certain level of integrity. Uh, you hardly get public or civil servants uh, 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 standing surety in, 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 in criminal cases. Uh. Counsel for Theophilus Kisi, third accused, believes his client has done no wrong and was only acting under instruction from his superiors. He is hopeful his clients will be freed on January 7th, 2015, when the case is recalled. As for me, I believe seriously that my client, Theophilus Kusi, will, you know, go scot-free. What about the accomplice? I can't talk for them because my client took instructions from his, you know, okay. uh, his uh, uh, superior officer. You know, imagine you were in a certain position, your superior officer gives you instructions and you refuse to take it. What do you think will have happened? You definitely have been dismissed. Exactly. You know, so he acted on the instructions of his, and, and then his superior officer has not denied the fact that he gave him the instructions. Okay. Now, the two other ladies have been accused of traveling with Nayeli, but abandoned their luggage and managed to abscond after she was arrested at the Heathrow airport. Meanwhile, Nayeli has pleaded guilty to the charges preferred against her by a UK court and is expected to reappear before the court on January 5th 2015 in the United Kingdom, two days before the hearing here in Ghana. Latif Idris, Joy News, Cocoa Affairs Court, Accra. Now, many tend to have a rather long list of things they want for Christmas. It ranges from presents to travel plans. But for the inmates of the Krishna Orphanage at Sotum here in Accra, they had a simple wish, which the Ringwood Central Rotary Club made come to pass. The excited children began their tour of the Kutuka International Airport at the International Departure Hall. Together with the caretakers and officials of the airport, the team headed for the boarding gate. They had to take the long way there as a power trip made it impossible for them to use the escalator. For security reasons, our camera was not allowed to film every part of the airport the children visited. But we did not miss this shot of them looking on as this fighter jet took off. Mame Kwaba Stevens, one of the directors of the Ring Road Central Branch of the Rotary Club, says the orphans had longed to visit the airport this Christmas. We went there to have church service with the kids, have mass with them, actually saw some of them baptized, and we, some, some of the Rotarians actually became godfathers to these kids. We donated 10,000 Ghana CD and a lot of clothes and Christmas gifts and items. And one of their Christmas wish is to actually see a plane and so, with the help of Ghana Airport Authority and Stabo, Rotary Club was able to make this happen. After going through various installations at the airport, including the expanded conveyor belt, the children were taken to the tarmac and given a tour of an aircraft. Their excitement at the end of the day could not be hidden. I'm happy, I'm happy that I saw the Starbo airport and the airplane and everything. I went through a lot of teaching and I also learned that before you can uh, go into the plane, you have to pass through process. You have to go through uh, air screaming and a lot of things there. And I have a lot of fun. We, we sat in the plane and we learned a lot of things in the plane. We learned how to put the seat belt and everything there.
awesome feeling they must have had. Well, moving on with some other stories. A national validation conference on quality assurance for public and private universities in Ghana has been opened in Accra. The conference is to help develop a national framework to guide quality assurance units of tertiary institutions. The conference, organized by the University of Professional Studies, UPSA, brought together key stakeholders in education to engage in discussions geared towards certain guidelines to ensure conformity in the tertiary sector. The panel took turns to deliberate on issues. In the world today, higher education, the key word now is about quality assurance. How you move on with your structures to come out with the best because of the cross-border recognition of qualification and the fact that we are now in a global world. And if you move from Ghana, you should be able to be accepted in any part of the world. It is for this reason that the National Council for Tertiary Education thought it wise to develop a policy framework on differentiation and diversification of tertiary education institutions in Ghana. It is intended to make every tertiary institution focus on particular mandate for which they will be measured by the various yardsticks and benchmarks. You, you, in fact, you will be surprised to find out that right now, the generation that we have, in the classroom when you are teaching, students are WhatsApping. Even at the level of university, it's not easy at all. Even right from during our days, to go to a second school and come out, People went to elementary school, they became very good teachers in institution. No, I don't know that so. So the system is suffering gradually. But just that we are having quality assurance at higher levels, perhaps we should start thinking about how to also keep eyes on the lower levels. Because by the time they come to the university, somebody who has spent all their life in the, in the, in the secondary school, and with the parents come to the university, you want to transform that person 100%. It's impossible. For the National Accreditation Board, apart from looking at the minimum standards, uh, let me also say that one way of monitoring is that accreditation is not for an indefinite period. It is given uh, for a maximum period of five years, depending on uh, the resources you have. The fact that you, be re you will have to be re-accredited is part of the quality monitoring process. In between the accreditation and the re-accreditation period, auditors, academic auditors, are sent to the institutions to monitor the sort of progress an institution is making. And that is also part of ensuring that a certain level of quality is in place at all times. Key issues that emerged out of the discussions were unaccredited institutions awarding certificates and also graduates who do not meet industrial requirements. Everybody is studying everything. Therefore, you go and flood the market. If you think 5,000 people who have done political science and they enter the market, where would they find their jobs? You see, we are not training people for jobs. We are just giving general, uh, I mean, instruction to students. That's probably why you see them come out. But again, during our student days, everybody has some kind of serious attachment. But right now, there's no connect between what is happening in the industry and what we are turning out in the university. And of, of course, there are many more universities coming up now. Almost everybody is doing business administration, marketing, uh, human resource management, and so on and so forth. How many people want to even train? We always say that science and technology is the key for development. How many universities are doing science? What will be your proposal in terms of solutions? In terms of solutions, as I said, number one, let us know what is our requirement for manpower in the country. As a teacher, we don't know. Okay? As I said, we've been saying that we need a scientist for development. No nation develops without scientists. So, Sudan so doing science. I even pay more fees than those who are doing uh, the liberal arts and so on and so forth. Why can't there be some kind of incentive? The stakeholders called for a harmonized guideline for operations within the education sector. 
Let's return to our earlier story where well, residents living in areas that are supposed to be supplied water from the Kwon Water Station can now heave a sigh of relief because President John Mahama commissioned the Kwon Water Supply Expansion Project, which is supposed to pump out 20 million gallons of water daily to homes in Accra and the Eastern Region. While well, speaking at the commissioning ceremony held at the premises of the project, President Mahama noted that general water supply by 2016 would be increased from a little over 60% to 76 percent. There is where I bring you this report. It's my honor and privilege to press the green button to commence the flow of 20 million gallons of water which would eventually uh, increase to 40 million gallons. This project, which is considered long overdue, has left many areas without water for a very long time. Before commissioning the project, President Mahama inspected the new Pong intake rehabilitation and rural rehabilitation projects, as well as the new Pong treatment plant. The project is jointly funded by China and the government of Ghana. The Chinese ambassador to Ghana, Sun Baong, was optimistic of a continuous trade relations between the two countries. I want to stress that China will continue to make its contributions to Ghana's economic development and social progress. We wish people of Ghana and the people of China continue to enjoy political stability and economic prosperity. Paramount Chief of Minyakoba, Nene Sakite II, who was happy about the commissioning, expressed regret that some areas within the Pong Township lack access to potable water. All I ask of you and the government is to be mindful of the fact that most of my towns and villages over here do not have adequate water supply. And I will therefore, I will therefore plead with you that as we supply the whole nation with water, both here from Pom and Bukuno, which provides water to Kofuridwa and beyond, that my towns and villages will also get the same privilege of having some portable water supply. President Mahama assured some work is being done on the pipelines, adding, apart from persons living along faulty pipelines in Kufarija, those within Adenta and its environs can contact water distributors as most of the pipelines were cut off as water has not flowed through them for years. Since the construction of the pipeline carrying water to Kufarija was done, it was realized that many of the communities along the pipeline all the way to Kofredwa were left out in respect of receiving the water. And so we've asked the Ministry of Water Resources and uh, Works and Housing to correct that mistake and ensure that at any time that we create a pipeline to take water or a utility line to take uh, a power to another location, they must make sure that communities along the road uh, or along that pipeline benefit from the service. And so working together with the Eastern Regional Minister, all the communities along the pipeline to Kofredwa have been identified and they are going to benefit from the water that is carried uh, along that pipeline. Outlining various water projects across the country, President Mahama said potable water will flow through every tap in the country by 2025. The government of Ghana is financing $13 million of the $273 million from water expansion project. The rest is from the China Exim Bank. The project is awarded to contractors China Gazuba Group Limited. A report by Gifty Andoapia. Meanwhile, the president is calling on persons to pay their water bills on time so that the, uh, so that the companies in charge of delivering the services will be able to do so. We have good news for hundreds of thousands of Ghanaians who are going to be benefit from this project that government has carried out. 
Ghana has achieved the Millennium Development Goal when it comes to water coverage, but we believe that this is not enough. We must achieve more than that. Currently, rural water coverage amounts to 65%. It means 65% of Ghanaians living in rural areas have access to safe drinking water. And 63% of Ghanaians living in urban areas have access to safe drinking water. Our goal is to, by 20, 2025, make water available to all Ghanaians, no matter where they are in this country. But we are hoping, in the short term, that between now and the end of 2016, we can increase the rural water coverage from 65% to 76%. Let's do some sports now. And the Ghana Football Association has scheduled Wednesday, January 7, 2015, as a date for the start of the 2014-2015 Ghana Premier League season. The first Capital Plus Premier League season uh, league, which was scheduled to begin in September, was halted by a court case filed by Ken Faisal FC, which prevented the GFA from holding its annual congress to usher in the new season. However, after an Accra Human Rights Court dismissed the club's application for an injunction, the GFA can now go ahead to hold its Congress and begin the new football season. Now, the GFA Congress has also been scheduled for Tuesday, December 30, at the Ganaman Soccer Center of Excellence inside Pram Pram. Now, the much anticipated bout between Ghana's Imano Tego and Tanzanian Sadiki Mumba would go on as planned at the tennis court of their Craspore Stadium. Mumba may now uh, may have arrived in town last Sunday to very little fanfare, a tactic his camp believes would play in his favor. Tego, who was last seen in action against Gerardo Robles over 16 months ago, has been talking tough and is promising Ghanaians a fight to remember. Asamoah Jan is CEO of Baby Jet Promotion. Um, an ex exciting bout, you know, um, another exhibition bout for him, you know, to to prove um, what he's capable of, you know. So um, I haven't got any doubt in my mind. Uh, my boy is gonna is gonna deliver, uh, but. Talking about me coaching him, um, it's going to be um, a surprise. You know, um, uh, he, he knows I know ev ev like everything about boxing. You know, boxing is, is my game. You know, I've got passion for the game you know, since day one. You know, so uh, let's wait and see on the 26th of uh, December. You know, um, I'm inviting everybody to the Accra Sports Stadium to witness everything because it's going to be an exciting bout. You know, we've got a lot of um, undercards also coming up. Uh, it's going to be very, very exciting on, on a boxing day, you know. So I'm just inviting every Ghanaian to be at the Accra Sports Stadium to witness the bout because it's, it's going to be a great bout. For the security-wise, um, um, I have to talk to my team, you know. They, they are the organizers um, of everything. But I think everything has been um, sorted, you know, security-wise. That's the most important thing. As a promoter, he brings the friendship between Tanzania and Ghana. I thank Asamoah Gyan as a promoter. He brings the friendship between Tanzania and Ghana now. For Emmanuel, my opponent, I don't fear about him because I was watching his video since I hear the fight. So I'm here to show him he's a junior fighter. I was fighting in several countries such as Philippines, Russia, Indonesia, and Thailand, and I met champions. So, Emmanuel is a young boxer for me. I'm going to show him how am I champion. I'm going to beat him on front of his supporters. So, you all welcome on the stadium on that day and watch what is happening in your country. 
We're still doing some more sports and Ghana winger Christian Achu could face a late fitness test ahead of the start of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations with Everton, revealing on Tuesday that the Ghanaian international will return to training just seven days before the start of the tournament. Achu is back at Chelsea for treatment on a hamstring injury that he picked up during Everton's 1-0 defeat to Cuban Cross. Across Norda in the Europa League on December 11. He was expected to sit out for only 10 days but has been delayed due to complications. Everton manager Roberto Martinez revealed on Tuesday that the Ghanaian international will return to training later January 10. New Ghana coach Evram Grant could find himself in the quagmire as he must decide whether to include the winger in his final squad with the deadline of submission of final names set by Cuff on January 7, just three days before he returns to the pitch. And that's it for sports. Now, the African Center for Energy Policy is asking the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, to reduce fuel prices in their next review following the drop in crude oil prices. They want the NPA to be transparent in how they settle debt and not attribute an increment to debt payment. He expects fuel prices to go down following the continuous drop in oil prices. But the MPA maintains it will use silver recoveries from the fall in crude oil prices to settle the debts of BDCs. For ASAP, the drop presents an opportune time for four prices to go down. We should see a review uh, of prices downwards. NPA need to come across as a credible uh, uh, agency and regulator of the sector. You know, when prices are coming down and you want to stay where you are, and when prices go up, you want to increase prices. You don't appear to be credible, you know, uh, operating in a regime that is supposed to be automatic, you know, adjusting between the low and high prices. Because we have seen further drop in prices from the 70s to now $60, uh, uh, we need to see a reduction in prices to, to, to build that confidence that the consumer needs, you know, in the, in, in the organization. And I think that MPA will do itself a lot of good to do that. ASAP also called on the MPA to be more transparent in how it utilizes inflows. We need to know how much we owe, how much has been recouped, at what rate, you know, what was the margin that was put on, and does it meet, you know, uh, uh, the needed uh, uh, flows to be able to re recover uh, or pay back th those debts. I think the transparency around it is what is critical because it is a lot of money when it comes to oil, even downstream. If it's once a peswa on each liter, it amounts to huge uh, uh, flows. And we need to be transparent about what is coming in, how are we paying off. And once people know transparently you know, how you are dealing with that situation, I think they can understand. Rather than just sitting in your office and say, we are paying debt, how much debt are you paying and how are you generating that? revenue to pay the debt. It's important we are transparent about that. And, and, and NPA hasn't been that transparent. Yoba Recoveries is meanwhile to enable government to pay off the 412 million Ghana cities debt piled up as of July this year due to high under recoveries of petroleum products. Government has only been able to recoup 174 million Ghana cities which represents 42 percent of the amount. Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News. Well, some good news coming in. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has maintained the current tariffs for water and electricity for the first quarter of 2015. The decision of the PURC using the automatic adjustment formula follows the stability in the exchange rate and the falling oil prices. The PRC is, however, cautioning the public to conserve energy as 40% of the power generated is wasted. The PURC explained more than one variable is used in computing the automatic adjustment formula which could either push the tariffs upwards or downwards. The components are not only crude oil and 
um, exchange rate. You have the component of inflation, you have the component of a generation mix, you have the component of the fuel mix, and all these we have the component of the low two that we have made. So that is what we are faced with right now. Instability in a price the crude oil price is coming the government is going up. Sometimes we are in Ghana right now. Government is maybe buying crude oil for the utilities at a lower rate. But at our end where our crude oil is going to sell on the international market, we are losing. So you see that you gain in one side and another side you lose. So the gains you make negates the other. So that is what is happening with the variables that we have. Because ours is not just a single variable, it makes it difficult for you to say categorically that if this variable goes up, it should go up, this variable goes down. There are times that even the impact of just one variable can override all the variables. The exchange rate stability and falling oil prices in this case caused the retention of the tariffs. But the director of public relations, Nanaya Jantua, was worried 40% of the energy generated is wasted. She called for the conservation of energy during the festive season and beyond. As we celebrate Christmas and use electricity to do all manner of things and joy, we need to also have in mind that um, we need to conserve because um, what we are the load that is being shared now is huge. We, we, we're talking about about 500 megawatts and we need to conserve. But what is most important is that the utility service providers should create avenues where consumers can complain. Flexible avenues where people can complain if they have problems with their electricity. Um, I don't think everybody at this moment should depend or can depend on 611, 611. That is the call center. They should make some cell phones available. They should make some numbers available that consumers can readily call when maybe they, they have a problem with their service or their lights have gone off. And also, we also urge the utilities that whatever plans they have put in place, um, as we see in the newspapers, as they have written to us, is to minimize the load shedding. They should stick to it for the, just for this period so that consumers can also enjoy the Christmas in a very merry fashion. Away from utilities, the Forestry Commission says it is still on the lookout for partners to help develop some of the country's wildlife resources. Although the Commission has started hinted of plans to convert the Achimoto Forest into an eco park, the project is yet to take off. The Commission says, in spite of the challenges it has faced this year, it is optimistic of a more successful 2015. Forestry Commission is taxed with the responsibility of protecting, managing and regulating the country's wildlife resources. It has over the years managed to execute this mandate in spite of the challenges it faces. Speaking at the end of year awards ceremony, Chief Executive of the Forestry Commission, Samola Faridati, said there is the need for more education on forest and wildlife preservation. The forest cover uh, declines, it has effect on the cocoa production. And so and so for bush meat alone, the value of bush meat consumed in this country per annum is about 300 million US dollars. You know, so these are all values or benefits of the forest that when we don't have the forest, you can imagine it's a, a consequence. So the media must do enough in letting the people know about the benefits of, of the forest. Workers from various departments of the commission who were outstanding in the year were presented with prizes. Land and Natural Resource Minister Ni Osa Mills urged the workers to give all their best on the job. And I realize and recognize that in your work, there are lots and lots of hard, bad people out there, mercenaries, wicked people, people who love only money, people who are in love with just cutting the trees. And you and I are there to help to stop that. So keep up the good work and just do what you can to the best of your abilities. Thank you and I wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Some of the award recipients expressed their gratitude for the recognition. I know it's a surprise that they will give me an award. 
Mm -hmm. What I will tell them that uh, I thank God that they recognize me, that uh, uh, they give me an award, and I thank all First Commission, executive, and directors. Always, I used to say that hard work don't kill. Even though I was a laborer, and born in 1977, 37 years in the service. As always, a pleasure bringing you business. Do have a Merry Christmas, Samabigil Admakunchi. Business news. Well, time now where we do the lighter side of the news. And this year's edition of the Becca Girl Talk concert was more than what many patrons had anticipated. Now, the all-female show in its fourth year did not only parade some of Ghana's famed performers, patrons were also given lots to think about. <laughs> The Becca Girl Talk over the years has become the number one event on the calendar for women from diverse backgrounds to meet and let their hair down. And this year's concert was one with a difference. Popular counselor Reverend Cyril George Luttrud made a special appearance at the event to talk to the ladies about the value of a lady. But the best caution I want to give you, your value as a woman, is not you getting gratification through masturbation. God created you with a value that when a man sees you, he completes himself. So when any machine completes you, you have left the ordinary to the extraordinary. And you are no more normal. So if you are no normal, you are what? Oh, can I tell you, you are what? I'm normal. Becca, the brain behind the event, also encouraged the leaders to strive to excel in life. In a very little way, I share my story through my music, and I know the next person is also going to be able to share their story to empower women, encourage women to strive to, to, do, to do good, to, to work hard, to prosper in life. And um, for me as well, at the end of the year, it's for just women to let their hairs down. I mean, gather them in one place, let them have fun, let them share their, um, their beliefs, opinions, and, and everything in general. So. Rapper Tiffany, who was recently embroiled in a controversial sex tape scandal, also shared some words of inspiration with her sisters at the event. Nobody can break you down until you want to break yourself down. So don't let nobody take your shine. That's all I can say. Show for the girls. Well, hip, hip life artist Emmanuel Botry, known in musical circles as Caucus, will have to celebrate Christmas and New Year in prison custody as the Kumasi Circuit Court has, for the fourth time, refused to grant him bail. Well, that's it for the bulletin. Before we go, though, we'll look again at our top stories. Now, we told you about good news coming in for residents of Adenta and surrounding areas as President Mahama commissions the own water works. And across the circuit court has granted bail to six persons arrested in connection with the Niley and Metapel cocaine case. And public sector registered pension schemes are asking President John Mahama not to sign amendments to the Pension Act passed by parliaments last week. Also, the African Center for Energy Policy, ASEP, is asking the National Petroleum Authority to reduce fuel prices in its next review, following the drop in crude oil prices. And in news elsewhere, Tanzania's president has sat lands and housing minister over corruption allegations.
My name is Gifty Andopia. You can follow me on Twitter at JNewsGifty. But remember, there's more news at myjoyonline.com and multitvworld.com. Up next is PM Express with Nana Ansakwa. Please stay tuned.